Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be giving you a bit of a special here. And, uh, many people have been asking us for the purposes of uh, doing some extra command stuff. I had a little bit of time so I said, you know, I'm going to do some command stuff and I'm going to do it based on something that interests me greatly and that is the F-16. So what we're going to have here is a three-part series uh, dedicated kind of to the, with the capabilities of the F-16R. Uh, you're going to see some tactical stuff as well as we're kind of, kind of scooting along. And I'll just kind of throw out some of my general comments about this incredible airplane, which was sort of the electric jet that became one of the most uh, versatile and capable, basically multi-mission, ridiculous light fighter ever. So what we have today, and again, you'll see this in all three videos, it's the same scenario. So you can see very clearly how it has kind of evolved here. Um, we're over here. It's uh, 1980 October. You can do the math to see why I chose October for this purpose. But the key thing here is that uh, we have three different F-16As. Now, the F-16A, uh, one of the ways you can tell you're dealing with an A, is usually it has the kind of like a black nose like you see here. And uh, the A model, kind of unique. When people think of F-16, this is not what they think of. Uh, but the A model itself, if you want to imagine, you've got something that is a very lightweight fighter. It is the OG electric jet. It's, you know, fourth generation, you know, very MiG-29-esque in so many, many, many different ways. You've got the old school a and PG-66 on board. You've got some basic radar warning receivers. You have the cannon, and this is probably my favorite part. Look at how little it carries. Uh, you've got some sidewinders, sidewinders only, by the way. We don't even have the Sparrow, which everybody knows how much I love. Uh, you have some nuclear weapons. You have a couple of free fall bombs, and that's it. Now, when I talk about the F-16A, it's uh, worth noting, like I said, this was designed to be a within visual range daytime fighter. So if you've actually looked at a cockpit of an F-16A, it's crazy. You have like this little like select page with like the eight digit displays here, and your radar is actually between your lap, uh, your legs right here, basically. You can't have it between two laps here. But you notice we got the side stick. You notice it's almost an analog airplane is uh, basically the best way to describe this thing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, except for the fact that it was so limited other than its incredible dogfighting capability. So the scenario today, uh, we're running into Yugoslavia here. Uh, we've already detected a naval target, so, which means that our radar warning system is working correctly. It's not actually a radar that has identified it. This APG-66 is uh, basically a multifunction radar. The very OG early version of this thing was not wonderful. You know, when I say not wonderful, uh, no exaggeration there. Let's go hit this one up here real quick here. Oh, you've got kind of the basics here. Let's see here. It is... IFF, and it is a pulse of Doppler, which means it can't see things below itself and it can't engage things that are below itself, which that's a good thing for us. Speaking of which, I'm gonna make sure we're at a good altitude here. I don't want this thing to accidentally dive and I'll use up half of our range. Some more things about the F-16. Of course, it was one of the early fly-by-wires. It's not the OG fly-by-wire plane. Notice, by the way, they were able to identify the ship target, which is excellent. So the radar was perfectly capable at targeting things that were in the water. Uh, the other thing we're noticing is uh, somebody way off here in the distance is uh, trying to sight us, and uh, definitely nastiness. Oh, we've got a couple things coming at. Fire control radar, air-to-air, -air, and again, uh, we can come in here and hit contact report. And notice, we have no idea what type of air-to-air -air radar it is. Uh, we'll get that later on with the uh, later blocks of the F-16. And of course, there are some SAM sites and all sorts of nastiness, you know, but we'll deal with that as we go. Now, one thing I noticed about the A model, again, daytime with visual range here, is how awful the radar is, and I was kind of commenting on that a minute ago. We still have the classic 40-mile range on this thing. That's it. You can also notice that it's got kind of the width, as far as searching goes, of pretty tight stuff. And now, let's see, oh, we got some hostiles. Oh, boy, I wonder what they could be. Let's go ahead and I'll pause for a second. I'm gonna press F1, hold down Shift. I'll drag a box around them. F1, Shift, drag a box around them. F1, Shift, drag a box around them. Unspace. Now, the reason I'm launching every single one of my F-16s at them is because, like I was saying, this thing is basically a glorified F-5 at this point here. You know, for those of you not familiar with the F-5, it's the Tiger. It was basically, I just need a cheap fighter that can drop a couple bombs and shoot missiles. That's really what the F-16A is, if you want to kind of think of it a different way. All right, we're targeting. Something's looking at us. At least we're able to identify things don't like us very much. And how long is it going to be before these two aircraft uh, suddenly decide to, oh, here they come. <laughs> All right. Now, go ahead and place your bets on what they are. Ah, oh, you already knew what they were. So let's see, your contact reports. Uh, we're still not sure what the things are, and uh, we are detecting them on radar. They're kicking up speed here. They're doing well over Mach 1, and they've climbed to 45,000 feet. So you're definitely talking up here. Uh, this is not like a MiG-19 coming after us or anything like that. But we'll see what happens uh, when we do our initial uh, kind of break here. Remember, no radar-guided missiles yet. And uh, that's one of the things, I don't know, I have a tough time with that. Just My mind is, uh, struggles a little bit with that. Okay, here we go. We'll come down here. Here we go. 
Coming up here again, A models, some unknown aircraft. This is U 2 B 2. And uh, they're exchanging missiles back and forth already here. Oh, we lost an F 16 already. We've lost two F 3 F 16s already. So uh, the fight's not going so well for us. And uh, you can see here that uh, whatever it was, it was a MiG 29. That's right. Uh, the opening battle, the opening salvo here has already cost us uh, two F 16s in exchange for a single MiG 29. Now, let's see here. The F-16, with its amazing turn radius, is snuck right back up on this guy. Oh, you can see everybody else is just crowding up on him. You're feeling pretty lucky today, aren't you, Big 29? This guy's like, no, 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 don't shoot me, no, no, no. It's, it's not going to matter. That's um, uh, AIM-9L, and it's over. So our first engagement here, uh, we can see here that, uh, let's see, I'm down. Uh, he's got all four. This guy's got, uh, let's see, all four, and this one I'm down two. So my exchange rate for two MiG-29As, again, pure aircraft. Uh, they had better, the R-73 is so much better than the um, AIM-9L. And you could see, that, that, that's it. We, we suffered for that. We suffered a lot. All right. So not so good so far. Not so good. Like I said, that was a one-to-one -one exchange, which makes sense. Uh, they're basically the same plane, but the MiG-29, obviously, it's a little more mechanical. MiG-29 as well has uh, got some other kind of bells and whistles, which makes it pretty effective. All right. Our next challenge, of course, is to actually strike the airfield here. And again, this is the A model. Uh, for those of you, before we go uh, strike that field, by the way, it's worth noting that there was another version of the A model. Uh, there's actually the F-1680F, if you've not had a chance to see it. Uh, this is basically uh, taking the A model and uh, kind of improving it all. I mean, ADF, there we go. Uh, believe it or not, so this is like a slightly improved version. It's also worth noting at this point, since we're talking about all the versions, is that there was a B model of the F-16, which if you want to think about it another way, is just the two-seater model that you can see right here. But capability-wise, less range, same airplane. And that's one of the things I love. That being said, I have no idea how the guy in the back seat could see anything. Where are you going? Where are you going? You're engaged defensive. Oh, you're still running from that missile 10 minutes ago. Hut, choo. Ah, much better. Got him back in the fight here. All right. So as you can see, didn't do so well there. Oh, we're lacking that beyond visual range capability, which killed us in that last engagement. So now it's time to see what we can do against these ground targets. Now, the F-16A, as you're probably well aware, did not have the harm. As a matter of fact, most F-16s didn't have the harm. That came much later. We also didn't have night capability or anything, you know, useful like that. So that means our primary weapon for the purpose of surface, uh, basically suppression of enemy air defenses, is none other than the, womp womp, the Maverick 65B. This is the tiny Maverick. Now, for those of you who know the Mavericks, you basically have the little Mavericks, you have the big Mavericks. When people think of Mavericks, you're usually thinking of the little Maverick. The big Mavericks, I don't know if it's going to give me a picture of this thing, are huge. And it's uh, worth noting the difference there uh, because, uh, we, like I said, we have very, very short range, very limited capability ones. So we need to fire at these. They're very well defended here. These are SAM 2s, SAM 3s, and you notice there's a Zeus down there too. So this is going to be tough to get close enough to the airport to do any real damage. So let's use some tactics here. Uh, we know there's a guideline. We know we have some air-to-air -air airplanes. I'm going to order them right there, and they're just going to sit there and loiter. And the purpose of this group of airplanes is to basically absorb SA-2s. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my seed and D group, and uh, they've got the hardest job of all. They basically got to sneak up here. Let's see, is there any terrain we can really utilize? Oh, this is going to be really hard we can try to kind of go around the back and like surprise them like that's probably going to be the way to do it oh this is a uh, this is going to be mathematically uh, very complicated for us there we go and i'm gonna have to do some manual shenanigans there and i'll go ahead and drop them down to minimum altitude one of the nice things about the f-16 and then our a2a group is um, also going to basically be absorbing sams here uh the a2a group can stay right there and we'll leave them at altitude all right Time for some tactics. Uh, in before one of these F-16 groups decides to fly home. <laughs> Happens every time. Again, um, there's some incredible, incredible examples in history of using the A-model F-16s for stupidity like this. Uh, the Israelis, for example, uh, struck the Iranian uh, missile sites, actually not missile sites, uh, nuclear sites in the early 80s, basically with this version. Uh, they had their own kind of fancy version of this. And why are you folks getting so close? You are plenty close enough. You can stay right there. I don't want you getting any closer because those SAM 2s are going to start opening up in a second here. All right. Meanwhile, my C&D group has uh, got to kind of sit there and kind of do their thing. We'll grab these folks. Uh, they're already at loiter. These folks are going to drop down the loiter. I don't want them wasting any more fuel than they need to. Yep, here they come. Now, the cool thing about the SAM 2, and uh, this is something that anybody who's ever played any of the Falcon games knows, is that you only have six missiles before you have to reload. And the reloading process is about 30 to 45 minutes per missile. So as long as you can get them to run out of the initial blast of missiles, uh, you actually have a really easy time of it. So yeah, as you can see right here, they're firing that next round of missiles right there. All right, here comes my <laughs> extremely, extremely aggressive group here. Oh, these guys are so good. 
They're just like ripping through the valleys and can't. Uh oh. Uh oh. We got problems. Uh oh. Ah, I should have suspected they would have had more airplanes. Ironically, this group of airplanes has no idea what's going on here. Okay, this is a problem uh, because I don't want to go over the top here. Because if I go over the top, basically the rest of the SAM sites are all going to start firing at me. All right, we have to get in range, which unfortunately, even though this is our range, we have to actually visually see the targets before we can fire here. And that makes this very challenging. All right, one, two, one, two, and we're going to fire at the other one. We're going to fire one, two, and we're going to fire one, two. We're not going to waste any time here. Again, we have to detect these sites before we can actually engage them. So we can't just sit there and like cheap shot from behind the mountains here. We have to actually take a shot. All right, let's go ahead and spin in. We're not gonna have a lot of time for the shot. Here we go, here we go. So one of the things we can do is we can pop up and basically duck real quick. Uh, let's try that real fast and see if that's gonna work for us. Pop up. All right, this is gonna be really challenging. Those early, 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 um, like I said, Mavericks are very short range. There we go, we got a couple off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set automatic. SA-3 is already firing. <laughs> Good luck down there, guys. All right, where is this group? Oh, this is my A2G group. What are you doing? Go back. <laughs> where are you going? Again, the problem with these early F-16s, too, was range. All right, so my Mavericks are being fired there. You can see we're all breaking off, which is the correct thing to do with a Maverick, by the way. You basically fire, and then you hide, because, again, they're firing and forget. You know, this is our early attempt at doing some seed work. These SAM-3s have no... Whoa! Did you see that? The Zeus got one. Nice shot, Zeus. And it doesn't matter. The SA-3 is out of the fight, which also means the SA-2 is out of the fight, which actually means uh, we're good to go. So on a sign, F1, click. All right, you folks can now do your thing. We're going to give them a little push here just for the sake of simplicity here. Wow. Yep, so the SAM-3 is probably out of commission at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, order them to attack here. I don't know why those guys are waiting around. We'll do automatic so they can step up and get going. All right. Oh, nope, somebody fired. What was that? It was the SAM-3. Okay, so we didn't even hit the radar on the SAM-3. So insanely, the uh, SA-3 here is still going, even though it's received uh, several Maverick hits there. Completely authentic. Again, these are the uh, tiny Mavericks. Bam, 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 bam. All right, that should do it. All right, what do we got left here? So our seed group here, you can see every single one of them is still alive. Unfortunately, the uh, so SAMs are partially out of commission here. What I really want to do is do a strafing run of this final SAM. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow one of these real quick. Pause. I'm going to go press the 9 key, grab this guy. I'm going to detach him. And uh, we're going to unassign him F3. And we're just going to basically do a high-speed pass with a cannon. Because why not, right? I've got one. You might as well use it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And we need to be, I think it's within 1,000 feet to use the cannon properly here. Knowing me, I just drop in from space and just kind of a thing like that. Uh, one nautical mile range, but the slant is 0.8. So we got to get real close to use this cannon. All right, everybody else, these guys can go home. They've done their job. Meanwhile, my A2A group is chasing down whatever these two chaps are. And then my A2A group, which, like I said, was disregarding everything I told them to do. It's a fuel thing. Uh, they're going to go ahead and uh, sneak in here. All right, about 1,000 feet. Like I said, we're going to take a gun run on our SAM-2. We're going to do it at a slight oblique here, make it a little bit safer. Oh, boy, this is going to be an interesting gun run. Meanwhile, my F-16s, unfortunately, uh, again, no LGBs or anything like that. So we're doing this the hard way are just going to be doing a little strategic air command on the uh, air base itself. Let's see, here comes my A. It's dropping down 13,000 feet. Getting ready for the burp. All right, I'll treat you to the burp. Of course, you're sitting there going, what is this guy talking about? I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, just so you can be happy. Of course, you can hear a bunch of missile launches and stuff like that in a second, but that's okay. Haha, -ha, we got the SA-3. All right, what is this guy doing? This is my A2A group. You guys can go home. You guys can go home. All right, here comes one last little burp. Ooh, somebody's shooting. Wowie zowie. <laughs> oh, no! He's... Well, that's the end of him. In the meanwhile, um, our strategic bombing campaign is uh, well underway here. Let's see how it's going to do. Again, F-16s. Nice. All right, you folks can go home. You've done a delightful job. All right, so F-16As have done their F-16A goodness. Let's see how we did. Open up my losses and expenditures, and let's see what happened. So we got two MiG-21s, of course. Uh, two MiG-29s at a loss of a little bit. Uh, we got 
interesting. We hit the rails. We didn't hit the radar. Oh, wow. We actually got somebody in an SA-7. I wonder how we got that guy. Uh, we got a couple of radars, very valuable targets. Uh, they went through a little bit of missiles. Notice six. Six is the magic number for SA-2s. Coming down here at the loss of three F-16 alphas. Oof. All right. So as you can see, early model airplane. Uh, not a lot going on with this thing. And again, despite the fact it was an early model airplane, that was a relatively tough engagement for us. So we had, again, some pure fighters. Obviously, we overwhelmed them a little bit. But without that, like the AIM-7, or especially the AIM-120 that we're going to get later on, we were at such a disadvantage. We actually had to do dogfighting the old-fashioned way. You know, we couldn't cheat our way unless we stuck up on them. Um, our seed capability was pretty garbage. Uh, like I said, uh, we did okay because we had the advantage of this really nice little valley we could basically plink in. But again, without that harm and without the standard or without even the shrike, uh, we're a bit of a world of hurt as far as that goes. And again, I left the naval target alone for this scenario. But if you want to imagine if we did want to attack the naval target, that's the great thing about this. Let's go grab some A models again, uh, just for demonstration of how this would not go well for us. Uh, let's see here. I need an A. ADF is actually the nice one. Uh, let's see here. USA. Let's go to USA. USA. Uh, Ukraine. Cool. I like that. Uh, USA. That's the one I'm talking about. So we'll grab the A, I'll we'll grab some, again, we could try to hit them with bombs. It's not going to go well for us. Uh, we'll instead grab a bunch of the B models. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, boop. And that's uh, the sound it would make otherwise, but obviously I ain't going to make that sound. All right, everybody go down there. Again, this is four. This is <laughs> a total of eight Mavericks here. We're going to shoot at an Osa. Remember, Osas are not exactly sophisticated. All right, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Everybody's going to go take the shot here. Just a demonstration of our naval capability in an F-16A. And it's gone! <laughs> Again, the, the Maverick will do the job, no problem. So as you can see, the F-16, um, like I said, I love that airplane. The A model, it, it, it's got a ways to go. It, it worked fine. We used it aggressively. It did just fine because our tactics were pretty good. With a little bit of support, we probably would have had even easier time of actually succeeding at the scenario. Obviously, if there were 100 MiG-29s and they're all integrated with F-85, Gosh, this would have been a tough scenario. But what gets interesting is when we get the later models. But that is for the next video. Enjoy.